No. Legendary singer Aretha Franklin left a legacy of great music, but her passing also left some lessons we could all use for estate planning. Personal financial expert Stuart Welch from the Welch Group joins us now to let us know more about this. We, we know from stories that we did about her, she had some handwritten wills, but they were not notarized, and that obviously created a big legal battle among her heirs. Yes, yeah, so she died in 2018 of pancreatic cancer, mm -hmm. and uh, they found two wills that were handwritten, not witnessed at all. One of them was locked in a drawer and another one was tucked under the cushion of a sofa. And so, uh, and they didn't say the same thing. So immediately it launched a legal uh, battle between the sons. Mm -hmm. And it's five years later, so you can imagine the amount of time and effort and money spent trying yeah. to settle this. Yeah. And I think in there is a lesson. She, again, she had a big estate, $10 yeah. million. Dollars, so yeah. there's, you know, a lot of money at stake. And I know some people out there are saying, you know, this is not something I want to talk about, but you do have to. You do have to plan for this because if you do it the wrong way, that's what you leave. A lot of headaches for, for the people you leave behind. So we'll talk about, uh, first of all, getting a will and the right kind of will. Yeah, so I think uh, the, uh, there's just some basic things we do. We've talked about it many times. You need a will, yeah. and you need a properly drawn will. In Alabama, that means it's got to have two signatures, two witnesses, uh, and so you want it drawn. And the will basically outlines who's, who gets your stuff, but this is only the stuff that doesn't move by title mm -hmm. or by beneficiary designation. So beneficiary might be a life insurance pil policy. Title might be a home mm -hmm. if you're married. It, Jointly, typically it'll move by title, but everything else moves by will. And so you want the will in there. If you have minor children, you're going to need to elect a guardian for the children, uh, and for not only for the children, but for the, for the money for the benefit of the children. Mm -hmm. So you want that. And then the second one is going to be a uh, general and durable power of appointment. So this is just a legal document that says, if I'm living but become incompetent, I'm gonna nominate someone to take care of my finances for me, to make those decisions and pay bills and things like that. That is so important, and uh, and also it's very important to update your will as you have different life changes. Now, for people with a you know a larger estate, you have may, may have more assets. The trust is the way to go, right? Uh, I think definitely the larger estate you're going to look at a trust. Uh, particularly, you know, they tend to be more complicated and you can do a lot more things within a trust document, but you have to name a trustee, which can be a family member. A lot of times it's going to be an institutional trustee, uh, but yeah, trust is uh, often thought of. And you need an attorney to help you draw that up, right? Because there's a lot of things that have to be done right in the trust. Yeah, and I don't want to forget the living will. So the living will is a document that says, if I become incompetent uh, and, I, and I'm on life support, this is what I want to happen mm -hmm. for me. And then uh, you also designate somebody to make uh, health care decisions for you should you not be able to. So those, those documents are really essential. Mm -hmm. You want an attorney, I would recommend an attorney do yep. it. You can do it online. If I were going to do it online, I would start my search with uh, LegalZoom.com. It, definitely. It's, uh, it's worth, but it's worth the investment if you can afford it to, to get an attorney, no doubt. Stuart Welch from the Welch Group, we always appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. you, Mike. All right, we'll be right back.